guys, what if I told you if you're in the flipping game or in the sports card market to make money, you're going to have a really bad time over the next 6 to 18 months. Let's just talk about that. What's going on everybody? Bowman1951 here. I've got my serious face on tonight. Still doing my day job. Sitting on my kitchen table pondering over and over again what is going to happen with the sports card market. Stock market's declining. Oil is down massively. Can't even find some solace in Bitcoin. So if you've parked a lot of money in sports cards, I think you're going to have a bad time. And I've come up with a list of some of the things that could be occurring over the next 6 to 18 months that we need to be on the lookout for, especially if you are looking to make any money in this. If you hold, sit on your stuff, you love the hobby for just collecting, you're probably going to have a great time because prices are likely going to come down on many of those key cards that you've been looking to add. But anybody else that's sitting on a lot of product or you know just wanted to move some in the short term, it's going to be an issue. Let's get right into that list. Okay, first thing I want to talk about, discretionary spending is drying up. Even I, right now, feel like I have a pretty solid job. I'm in a, in a field that's likely not going to be hit by any kind of recession. I'm nervous, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm not rushing out to buy any, you know, three-figure card right now. Due to the uncertainty and also, you know, is the market going to come down even more? Are those key cards going to be 25% cheaper, 50%, 75% cheaper in the near term? We're not really sure, but I know a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines now holding their cash tight in their hands and they're not looking to buy cards. So what does that mean on the supply and demand side? Well, the demand has significantly decreased just over the past week. Here we are heading into one of the last weeks of March 2020 and with the stock market the way it is and cards really taking a hit as well, it is not a good time to be a, a seller of anything out there. I don't care if it's modern or vintage. So bottom line, uncertainty can breed a lot of fear and that fear will lead to more rational decisions instead of irrational. I don't know. It could go either way. Nobody's making those obscene purchases they may have just a few short months ago and the card market seemed to be completely booming. My number two concern, eBay returns are going to significantly escalate. Guess what people, they already are. I'm reading on the Twitter sphere, blowout forums left and right. There are a ton of Giannis, Luca, Zion, you name it through the basketball world, sports guards being returned. Thanks Gary V for just a few short weeks ago telling everybody this is gonna be a spectacular investment. Then all of a sudden they come down a little bit. People panic and they take advantage of the policies that eBay offer them to return their cards. I have some, seen some really silly reasons too. I, I just can't believe some of them. Uh, I just don't like the card anymore. Really? It's a BGS 9.5 and, and you don't like the card anymore. Sure, buddy. That's the real true reason you have to return this. Nope. It's gone down 20, 30% in the last week. And you're dumping it right back on the seller. What a dick move. Bottom line, I don't think you should be selling a lot of cards on eBay right now. Move them to Twitter, move them to Instagram, Facebook Marketplace. If you can find buyers at any of those locations. Because eBay's pesky return policy is really going to come back to bite a lot of people. And it's already doing so uh, from those sales over the last 30 to 60 days. Not good. Not good at all, people. <laughs> My number three short-term fear in the sports card market right now is the survivability of those local card shops. They've been making a big comeback in the last few years, and you know if they've got to keep their doors closed for the next month or two months, whatever it may be, that is really going to hurt the bottom line. Rent is not going to get paid, and some of them may have to close their doors for good. I hate to say that. I don't want to see a single card shop need to close but man, if this thing escalates and continues on, uh, you know, deep into the summer, there are going to be some serious issues, especially for those that don't have a big online presence to move a lot of their product. I hope some of them have resorted to social media or maybe moving a bunch of their inventory to eBay. But man, there's no foot traffic going on through the brick and mortar shops right now. And I really feel bad for them. 
best of luck to you if you are a car shop owner watching this video and uh you know i'd love to support you guys but just can't take the risk right now along with many other people who uh, are just holed up in their homes piggybacking off the local card shops at number four are going to be the local card shows so let's talk about them a bunch have been pushed out into the future a couple have needed to be canceled but you know these are going to hurt the local dealers who maybe the card show uh, provides them a second income uh, along with their day job and they have no place to sell right now locally those, uh, you know, those aren't as big of a concern, I would say, as uh, some of the other topics I'm going to talk about. But still, I mean, they hurt the little guy. There's no foot traffic going through your local mall right now for a card show or your Holiday Inn, wherever they might occur. And there's just not much we can do right now. And this, again, if it extends through June, even into July, then uh, we've got some serious issues as it comes to... Uh, the local card show and people needing to move inventory and get it off their hands and turn that back into revenue uh, to make some money in the future. Number five is a huge issue, I believe. Coming down the road in the next six months, there will be a lot less people buying into breaks online. Discretionary income, again, drying up all over the country. Th the lower end products will certainly not fill. I don't know what breakers are going to do with their extra inventory. And some of these breakers are going to go under. I think that is a given at this point. I hate to break it to you guys, but especially if this continues on for a few more months and the unemployment rate ticks up tremendously, what are people going to do? They just have to feed their families and pay their bills. That fun money is gone and you're no longer going to be able to get your favorite team for 50 bucks a week. And the breakers are going to feel it. I, I, there's no other way to sugarcoat it. Time will tell. I hope I'm wrong. And I want to be wrong about a lot of these. But, uh, you know, just I, I think a reality is starting to set in as we look into the future for a lot of the aspects uh, revolving around this ecosystem of the sports card market and how they're all sort of intertwined with one another. Number six, and this one should be always some words of wisdom at any time when buying sports cards, but I feel that scams will be increasing significantly over the course of the next few months. People desperate, looking to make some quick cash, they're selling off their fake Jordans, their fake Brady rookies, whatever it may be, don't get caught up in these scams. Don't fall for somebody asking for Venmo payment or I saw one the other day, Apple Pay. I learned something new. I had no idea Apple Pay did not protect the seller. PayPal, goods and services, that's it. Or cash in person if you find somebody locally and then you can also look over the cards uh, while you're there in person. I think that's still the best. But uh, I, I, God forbid if somebody even got held up uh, locally, they were meeting in a dark alley somewhere trying to buy, you know, expensive card and they end up getting robbed or something. That would be terrible. I don't want any of this to happen to any of those wonderful collectors out there. So keep your head up, keep your head on straight, be mindful of people looking to take advantage of you in desperate times. Speaking of desperate times, we're going to go right into number seven here and that's people who need to liquidate very quickly to make their bills month to month coming up in the very short term. It was just announced today that almost 2 million people have lost their jobs due to coronavirus just in the past week. So many of them are gonna be applying for unemployment and anything that they can quickly sell off, they're gonna do so. Be a good friend. If you see somebody that needs to make ends meet all of a sudden and is putting up some cards, don't lowball them. Uh, just give them some fair market value right now. Maybe buy up, you know, a few PC cards that you've needed or that look really nice to you and help each other out right now. But just try not to lowball somebody. That could be months down the road when prices have maybe severely crashed and people held out too long to get rid of something. I would sell now if you really look like you may be losing your job in the near future. Uh, even if it hasn't occurred yet, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best, and you can always buy back those cards in the future once again. And point number eight, my last of this video, I saved this one because it saddens me the most that we even have to talk about this. But let's do so. There is the potential that the National Atlantic City, happening the first week of August, 
could be potentially canceled. Now, who knows if they can even push it out in the future. I'd give it a probability of around 50-50 right now that it may occur. Hopefully this blows over, uh, let's say by early July, that there are very few concerns anymore about the spread of the disease and the, they haven't acted yet in terms of actually canceling the entire show or moving it out in the future. But I, I think we, we are not in uh, for AC 2020 this year to happen. I mean, that's just my gut feeling right now. Let's hope that changes. But, you know, just if, for those that have already made plans, bought their flights, be prepared that there is a potential that we're not going to have a meetup this year. We're not going to go out and have a great time over those four to five days. You know, like I said, it makes me really, really sad to know that it, like such a social activity for all of us collectors could be going under due to the coronavirus. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. That was my top eight things to fear in the sports card market in the short term. I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I hope it's not. I don't want to see people get hurt. I don't want to see people over leverage with their collections and have to liquidate everything to make ends meet. That would be a sad thing to see. And I hope a lot of you, too, are also just in this for the hobby aspect of everything. And you're not relying on it to make your everyday uh, bills to move forward. So good luck to you all out there. I can't stress enough uh, how much I love everybody in this hobby and really pulling for a quick turnaround with everything from the stock market to all of your other investments that you may be in. Uh, I'm in this for a speculation aspect to pay for my PC cards by flipping some and uh, making a little cash off of those so then buy things that I truly enjoy and will truly keep for a long time, including my 1951 Bowman set. But hey, if prices come down on a Mickey Mantle rookie from 51 Bowman, I'm not going to be too upset, but I also likely won't be buying one anytime soon either, especially if the economy goes into a deep recession, uh, which potentially could happen into 2021. So bye for now. It was great talking to everybody, and I'd uh, love to hear your comments down below on how you feel about everything moving forward with the sports card market. Bowman 1951, out!